it going, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of Push Start to Listen, where we typically take a look back at the week in video game news. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, I took last week off, to be perfectly honest, the uh, news of the departures from GiantBomb.com, Brad Shoemaker, Vinny Caravella, and Alex Navarro. And it just kind of was a bit of a gut punch, and it just left me kind of not in the mood to talk about video games or even really think about video games. It's a website that's been near, very near and dear to me and, uh, and many. Um, and it was just, uh, you know, it came out of left field for for us that are just uh, viewers or listeners and uh, yeah I just kind of took the wind out of my sails but uh, back this week but tonight instead of doing a recap of the week in news because to be perfectly honest there wasn't a whole lot that was really grabbing my attention in terms of news I want to devote tonight's episode to a singular topic and tonight we're going to talk about accessibility in video games why don't we get right into it so I'm going to prepare you ahead of time. I might get a little rambly. I'll do the best I can in terms of uh, editing this down uh, in case I kind of go too far off the rails or kind of start to lose track of my thought. Uh, but I want to talk about accessibility in video games. And there's a few different ways I feel that you can tackle this topic. It all depends on kind of what perspective you want to take on it. Obviously, uh, when at first, when you think about it, for most people, they're probably thinking of people with physical disabilities. Somebody that maybe had an injury, they were born with a genetic condition, maybe they don't have full use of their hands, uh, you know, dexterity issues, whatever it could be. And there have been huge strides in that. And uh, that's not what I want to talk about today. I I don't, I'm not super well versed on that stuff and I don't want to speak on a topic that I don't feel confident enough speaking about. But I will say that, uh, you know, like Microsoft with their accessible controller, there are huge, huge strides being made to, uh, to bring people that maybe just don't have, you know, full use of their limbs uh, to be able to play and enjoy video games. Instead, I want to take a look at it from the perspective of how accessible should a video game be to just simply be played? And what I mean by that is your average person that sits down, and I'm gonna say average, let's say that they are, uh, let's use two different kinds of person. A person who is single, works a job, has normal responsibilities, but doesn't have a family. Maybe they are in a relationship or whatever, but they don't have, you know, other people living with them, other people that are like super dependent on them. And then let's look at it from a perspective of somebody who does, somebody that may have kids, a wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend that lives with them, whatever it may be, but they have, you know, maybe a little bit more responsibility uh, in their in their lives in terms of, you know, people that they have to take care of, you know, they may have things that they have to do that a single person wouldn't have to do. So let's take a look at it from those two perspectives. When you find yourself getting older and you find yourself out in the working world, you just kind of by default get more responsibility in life, right? And you kind of have to start to prioritize your hobbies. Some people may only have one hobby. Some people may have a few. Video games, you know, from the perspective of this channel and this this show, you know, that's kind of where we're approaching it. You know, video games are a hobby that can take up a lot of time. And I'm not just talking about somebody that spends, you know, way too much time playing games. I'm just saying in general, you know, you're probably sitting down to playing and playing a game on a regular basis, probably about the length of a movie, right? I would say that most people I know, when they decide that they're going to sit down and play a game, they're playing between one and three hours, right? Maybe that's their goal. Maybe they go a little bit over. Maybe they don't get it, whatever it may be. For me personally, even if I have nothing going on, I can only play a game for so long. So I've kind of never really counted myself in that category. You know, when I was single living on my own or, you know, now with a family in the house, it's kind of always just been that way. Um, but I find myself pressed for time with other things, you know, work, responsibility, whatever it may be. So not everybody gets, you know, the amount of time that they would want to spend on playing a game. So they have to rely on that game being designed to save in certain spots, you know, hopefully that they don't lose too much progress, that they have to stop early, whatever it may be. And as games have gone on and we get to more sophisticated modern games, most games save pretty much where you want. There are some games, you know, like Resident Evil, you have to stop at a specific save point to be able to save your games. But there are other games where it's just like you can hit the pause button and make a local save and you're good to go. It's a little bit more flexible on the computer, but consoles are pretty much caught up for the most part. And then there are games that take it like even way further, like um, just for instance, the PG PGA Tour 2K21, the golf game that came out last year. You can stop that game whenever you want when you're playing. When you start it up again, you'll be right there. If you were like in the middle of a shot, like you'll pick right back up. You don't even have to stop and hit pause. You can just turn your system off and you're good to go. 
And I certainly don't expect every game to go that far. Um, some games are just way more complicated than a golf game, and it's just not possible due to technological, you know, limitations. But I would like to think that designers would hopefully keep it in mind that, like, hey, not everybody can really spend a ton of time sitting down and playing this game. And you might be wondering, like, why am I bringing this up now? Like, what... What is really kind of causing this discussion? I think it's been kind of brewing for a few years now, to be honest. There's a lot of people that I've talked to that are my age or maybe a little bit older that have said like, man, you know, these days, you know what I look forward to, you know, what I'm looking for most in a game is that I can beat it in just a few hours. I don't have to devote, you know, 60 hours of my life to, you know, like your traditional JRPG or something like that. And I kind of found myself agreeing with them more often than not. I kind of seem to be drawn to either games that you could play on a re repetitive basis, like a sports game, or a game that's, you know, let's say the length of an Uncharted, you know, 8 to 12 hours you know that's kind of like the sweet spot for me now certainly there's games i've devoted way more time to you know i've put plenty of hours into games like spider-man which can be completed in a short amount of time but may also you know with if you want to really complete everything could take a lot of time a game like grand theft auto or red dead redemption where you know maybe 30 hours 35 hours is the baseline you know i certainly play those games but i also find myself just playing kind of some randy random indie games that only take a couple hours to beat and it kind of gets my fix I will certainly say that I definitely have a problem not being able to save my progress. One, I might have something else to go and do. Two, I may just not want to sit there for that long. And if you look at people that have families that are just like, hey man, like, you know, I got to put the kids to bed or like, I got to go to bed because I got to get up in the morning. You know, I got to spend time with my partner. You know, they just don't have a lot of time. A single person, even they, you know, I, I've talked to people that don't have a ton of familial responsibilities that just, maybe they work a lot. Maybe they just have another hobby that they want to devote time to. You know, they want to go out and see friends. They want to go see a concert, whatever it may be. And the, even they're like, man, you know, like, I just wish I could just, like, save my game and, and be on with it. And so what kind of has brought this to the forefront was the release of the game Returnal a couple weeks ago on the PlayStation 5. The game is pretty stingy with saves. Uh, it's a roguelike game, which means that if you die, you start back from the beginning. You save your progress in terms of, um, you know, like weapon unlocks and stuff like that. You know, games like Dead Cells are like this, Rogue Legacy, etc., etc. But Returnal kind of expects you to sit there for quite a bit to progress through the game. And we're talking like three to four hours and not everybody can do that. And the developer's official statement has been, well, put your PlayStation 5 into rest mode and you'll pick up where you left off. The problem with that is rest mode on the PlayStation 5 is so bugged out that, you know, if you Google it, most recommendations are telling you don't turn it on. Not to mention the game patched itself about a week ago. Players that were in rest mode, that patch bumped them out of their game and they lost all their progress. And that wasn't any fault of the PlayStation 5 having an issue with rest mode that was the fault of the publisher pushing that patch and then the patch had problems and they were like hey don't patch the game so it's just been kind of this big mess but it's been a hot topic lately about like hey how accessible should this game be should they allow you to save whenever you want should they force you to save at certain points or should they just expect you to be able to sit there and play the game for an extended period of time and there's a lot of people that fall into different camps there are people that, you know, will have a viewpoint of all, none, one of those things. You know, maybe they can see it from a couple different ways. And there's some people that are just like, hey, you just got to deal with it. That's the way they design the game. That's great and all to have a vision for how you want your game to be played. You know, you think of your dream scenario of like, what do I want the player to be thinking about? What do I want the player to experience while they're playing my game? But let's be honest, that's just, that's an ideal world and we don't live in an ideal world. The person that plays that game, you know, they want their entertainment and they want to play the game and they want to enjoy it as you made it. But also that person might have other things to do than just sit there for hours on end playing a video game. And they've made it next to impossible to be able to do that. Um, it's, it's to the point where it's like, I was really interested in that game and then seeing how it is, I'm not going to buy it. And I get that I'm just one person and my 70 bucks isn't going to make a bunch of difference to them. But I think at some point, if games continue on this path of like, hey, this is how we want you to experience the game and you got other things to do, that's your problem. You know, there might not, their sales might not be what they could have been. And I'm not saying that like all of a sudden, you know, a game that was going to sell a million copies is going to sell half that. I don't think that's going to happen by any stretch. But there's definitely going to be a vocal minority, at least, of people that are like, hey, I would really love to play your game, but, you know, I got other stuff to do, you know, I'm I'm a single parent, I don't have a lot of time to play your game, so I just have to play something else that allows me to save my progress. 
And then, you know, that's kind of one part of video game accessibility, right? And let's shift gears to the second point that I want to talk about, and that's difficulty. I remember when Sekiro Shadows Die Twice came out, and I believe that was two, three years ago at this point. It's a Souls-like game, right? It's in that vein of Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne game's really hard, right? Those games are very hard. And there's a lot of people that just can't play it due to that difficulty, due to the way the game is designed. You know, you die and you got to go back to this, you know, bonfire. I'm not sure what the equivalent in Sekiro is. Um, and you got to do a corpse run to try and get your stuff back and you might die on your way there. And for some people, that's like kind of the thrill of it. You know, it provides tension. It's an added experience to the game that other games wouldn't have that don't have a system like that. So I certainly understand it from a game design standpoint, but it does kind of put some people off and it brought up the whole thing of like man I wish some of these games had an easy mode and there were people online of course probably trolling that were like hey you know you should never need to play a game on easy you know easy mode is for people that aren't real gamers right and what does that even mean I'm gonna be honest I play most games on easy I'm not here to play video games to be frustrated I'm honestly not even really here to play video games to be challenged I'm here to play video games to kind of turn my brain off enjoy a story and just play a game now obviously not every game has difficulty levels and if it's a game that I'm interested in you know I just play it and accept it you know the Grand Theft Auto games they don't have a difficulty setting it's just that's what it is and granted those games aren't super difficult most everybody can play them you know which is kind of a testament to hey they know how to design a well-balanced game the game for me that kind of broke it I guess was Cuphead um I still, to this day, have not finished more than the first world of Cuphead. The game is too hard for me, and I'm happy to admit that. That game is too difficult for me. I can't play it. I will never experience all that that game has to offer for two reasons. One, I'm not that great at video games. It's a very difficult game for me to play, and I don't have the skill to progress as a game player. And two, I don't have the time anymore in my life to devote hours upon hours of learning boss patterns and how each level flows to be able to really do anything about it, right? Um, and that's unfortunate, but that's just something that I kind of have to accept. If I want to see that game, I got to watch somebody else play it because I can't do it myself. Part of that's on me, sure, but maybe part of that's on the developer too, right? Would it really have hurt the game in any way to put a difficulty setting in there? Could they have done a light mode and a hard mode and, you know, given everybody what they wanted? I'm sure they could have. They obviously didn't because they wanted to focus on making this really hard game. And that's fine. Not every game is for every person, but I don't think that you should be unable to play a game simply because it's too hard for you. If you don't want to play a game, it should be because the subject matter doesn't appeal to you, the genre doesn't appeal to you, the game is buggy, it has issues, whatever it may be. Maybe it's multiplayer only and you just don't have the time to devote to that. It shouldn't be because the game is not accessible for you. The game is too hard for you. That I don't think that should be the case. I, I really think that every game should be available to every person. Let the player decide if they don't want to play. Don't let the game decide if you can't play. And, and I hope I'm kind of getting my point across. I know maybe it's been a little bit tough to follow, but I think that the choice of what games we should play or what games we can play lies with us, right? It shouldn't be because the developer is immediately like cutting off half of the game's demographic and potential audience because, hey, you know, we just decided that like saving the game's not that important, you know? If you don't have five hours to dedicate to a run, then this game isn't for you because that's, you know, not a lot of people have that. I get that maybe teenagers have that or maybe streamers that play games full time have that, but most adults that have responsibilities and jobs and families and friends and relationships and all that stuff, we don't have time for that. And that's a shame. I don't like feeling like I'm being pushed out of this hobby that I love simply because game design is deciding that someone like me isn't worth designing a game for. Um, it's not cool. It's not fun. It makes video games as a whole just a little like less desirable in a way. And, you know, there are going to be some people that are just like... Hey man, I'm just, I guess I aged out of video games and that shouldn't be a thing. Nobody should age out of playing video games. Um, you know, if you want to stop playing video games because you lose interest, that's fine, but you shouldn't feel forced out, I think is maybe the point that I'm getting to. Um, you know, I don't want to spend too much longer on this. I think I got, you know, what I wanted to say out. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, 
it's part of getting older, I guess, right? You know, you got to prioritize things and, and see what works for you. You know, the games I play now are not necessarily the games I would have played 10 years ago. And the games I'm going to play in 10 years, I don't know, maybe there'll be some like neural link to my brain and I won't have to worry about it anymore, right? Um, you know, maybe we'll just all jack into the Matrix and, you know, <laughs> that'll be video games in 10 years. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I'd like to see more options, more accessibility, uh, just more more of an openness to uh, to bring more people into video games. Let's not push people away from video games. Let's bring bring more into it. So, yeah. So, that's going to wrap everything up for this week's episode of Push Start to Listen. Something a little bit different this week, just a singular topic. Maybe I'll mix this in from time to time, but next week I'm sure we'll be back to covering the weekend news. Uh, I always typically give a channel update at the end of this. Uh, I would say that look for the next mainline Push Start video within the next two weeks. I'm going to be working on it this weekend. Um, writing the script took way longer than I thought it was going to, uh, but everything's good. I just need to film it and edit it now. And uh, yeah, so just a kind of felt behind on that one a little bit uh but it'll be out in the near future you know cranking away on ideas and all that good stuff uh i was thinking about like hey when's the next time i can do another like toy haul video uh probably pretty soon i actually picked up a couple things today picked up a couple things about a week or two ago so not quite enough to fill a video with uh but we're getting there so be on the lookout for that over the next however many weeks but yeah i want to get into a little bit more you know regular routine and getting stuff up on the channel uh but yeah once again thanks everybody for checking it out and we'll be right back here next week <laughs>